Continuing on in entering and cleaning data, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the wonderful world of your computer's uh, file directories. And it sounds a little jestful when I say it that way, but it really is an extraordinary system. And in using R, we'll take advantage of it a lot. But you need to, you do need to understand a little bit about how it's set up and how it works for us to be able to take full advantage of that. So I want you to think of your computer file directory structure a little bit like this, this image that I've put here. And if you're working on Linux or Unix, this really is a good representation. So you have a root directory that we often indicate with a forward slash, and then a number of directories below that. I'll often call those lower ones subdirectories. So we've got um, a lot of times you'll have a user one and you might have a few users underneath that. And then you might have some of your general directories like documents, desktop, and downloads. And then within each of those, you can have either files, I've indicated the files here with green, or you can have other subdirectories, which I've indicated with blue. And so you can think of it as this tree going out where you have different things underneath the directory you're working in right now. In R, anytime you have a session open, you will be working inside one of these directories, and we call that your working directory. You can move around in those, and we'll look a little bit about how to do that. But even better is we'll take advantage of that idea, and as we're working on something, we will actually set up a project. We'll set up a directory with a few extra tags on it, um, and, and we'll work within that and organize our files to meet our needs in R, rather trying to, than trying to dart around in R to get to the right file by changing our working directory. Again, this is another step that it might seem like isn't super important right now, but is leading us towards um, getting good standards in reproducing. So I'm going to show right now how we can set up an R project, and then we'll look a little bit about at that R project as we go through the rest of these slides. If you go into R Studio, you can go up to File, and one of your options is to create a new project. I'll do that, and you can create projects. Um, either from a directory that you already have. Again, this project part is just adding a few extra pieces on top of a regular directory to make things go a little bit more smoothly in R. In this case, we'll start from a new directory. And there's some different templates for this. I just want something very simple right now. So I'll do a new project. At the very end of the class, we'll talk about R packages and shiny web applications. And if you're starting one of those, by opening a project, you can start with some of the structure already there. But for right now, we're just gonna be very basic and go with a new project. You can select where you want to put it and what the name is. So I'll name this one as Practice R. You wanna make sure that you don't put any spaces in, in your directory name or in your file names as we move forward in this class. Then I can browse through and decide where I want to put it. Right now, so you can see it, I'll put it on my desktop. You might want to put yours in a directory like, like your, your documents directory, someplace it's easy to find. So I can open this and create project, and it will move me into that project. So let's look first at my desktop. And you can see now that it has added this practice R. So it, <clears throat> excuse me, it is just a directory with that little extra piece added on top, but you're not gonna go too far off if you just think of this as a directory to store your files in for right now, and then learn how you can use it in R. So let's move some of our files in. Earlier, we were working on these two data files in a slide earlier in this. Let me see, will it let me? There we go. And then we'll move this one in as well. And you can see there was one file already in the, there, this one that ends in .rproj. That's what makes this directory, this special kind of directory in our project. And that was automatically added when we created it from our studio. So we have those files in there. Let's go back and take a look. You can see that we have the files listed right here. And as we go through, you'll also see that now that we have a project, it has moved our working directory into that directory so we have easy access to the files that are right here. So we'll go back and look at the slides a little bit, but then we'll be coming back and revisiting some of the ideas in our studio. So once you have an R project, 
you are in that working directory. And so the files that are inside that project, you have very easy access to. That doesn't mean you can't write code to access any file anywhere else on your computer. It just means that those are the quickest and easiest to get to. We can use a function called getwd, that stands for get working directory, anytime we're in R to confirm the working directory we're in. So let's go back to that project and try that. You can type getwd. And it prints out and you can see that we are in my home directory and then my desktop. And then after that in the special practice R directory. One other thing to note here, if you have a project, you'll see in the top right hand corner that when you're in that R project, it's noted right here. You can change to different projects. I have a few going on right now on different research projects I'm working on or the book for this class. And so you can go through and if you click on one of those, it will move you into that project and you'll have access, you'll be in that working directory and have ready access to all of those files. And then when you're ready to come back and work on this one, you can do the practice R. My only caution would be, as you create these different projects, which I definitely think you should have different R projects for the different research projects you're working on and for, for different classes or different things you're trying to practice, but do make sure that you never put one as a subdirectory of another. They can be in the same directory, kind of side-by-side -side subdirectories, but you don't want one of them to be under the other. So we can see again that we are indeed using that working direct the the um, our project directory we just created as our working directory. Once you're there, you can use list.files to list all the files that are in your current working directory. So in this case, in the example I'm showing through the slides, I had moved and was working in this R course directory. So when I do list.files there, it will tell me everything directly underneath. It won't tell me things underneath that without changing the defaults for list.files, but it will tell me just that next level. So let's look here. We can come in here and do list.files. And before we run it, we could guess that we might see these two files since these are the ones that are kind of sitting there. And that is in fact what we see, which is very reassuring. The other place that you can see this is in that files pane. We were just looking at the two. And these two things, again, should line up. It's good to know how to do list.files as well, though, because there may be some chances in your future work when you have to do things working with a remote, a remote server in R. Uh, for example, at Colorado State University, we have access to a supercomputer, and it's got R running on it. But to be able to use it, you don't have that same R Studio interface. You do need to learn how to do a few more things at the console and operate in that level. And so the list.files lets you do the same thing that you see in files through the console. When you run this, if, there's a, if there is something without a file extension, then that's probably a subdirectory of your current working directory, whereas files will be listed with the file extension. So we can look briefly here, and we can see that all of these do have a file extension. Those are all direct files rather than being a subdirectory. But let's go back into that. And let's create a subdirectory for our data. We can move these in. And now we can see that things have changed in our file area over here. If we click on data, we can see things there. But now if we do list.files, and I'm just using the up arrow to get to my last command to save a little bit of time. You can see that that data one is not listed with a file extension after, and that's because it's a subdirectory. When you do the list.files, you can explore what's in your subdirectories as well. You just need to include an option as you do that. So the parameters path, that stands for the file path. We'll talk a lot more about file paths in one of the later slides this week. But we can put that in, and then we just give it the directions from our current working directory. So right now, we just need to send it into that data subdirectory to list the files there. And then when you run it, you can see it lists the files in that subdirectory. In this example, I've done the same thing. In that case, we were working in this R course fall 2015 folder, 
And by sending it to course text through the path, it's listing out the files in that subdirectory.